So do you ever find some of your devices don't charge properly or maybe behave erratically? There's a good chance the problem could be your USB cables that you're using to charge them. And if you're like me, you probably have a lot of devices that need to be charged and you probably have a drawer full of cables. And you might not use the cable that came with the device to charge that device. Not all cables are created equally. And we're gonna to talk today about something you can do to sort of check your cables and maybe troubleshoot and decide which ones you should toss, which ones you should keep. So the big thing for me, and I've been using one of these for a long time, is using something called a USB voltmeter. This is basically something you just plug your USB cable into before you plug it into your computer or your charging device, uh, charging block, if you have one, whatever you're using to charge it. And it'll actually give you some pretty detailed information about what is going on with that particular cable as far as how much power is going through, volts, amps, current, etc. cetera. Um, there's a new one now that I've got, uh, new to me at least. Uh, this is a full color screen. It gives you a lot more information and it's really simple to use to figure out what's going on with your particular device. Because I've found that some devices, uh, they will just behave erratically if they're being charged or powered by a, a substandard USB cable. And quite often these USB cables, they're using really inexpensive wire and so they're not quite rated properly for the amount of uh, current that's passing through them. So that can actually affect the performance of the device and everything from charging your phone, charging your laptop, doesn't matter. It could all be affected by the quality of the cables that you're using. So let's take a look at what this gives you as far as information and how you wanna decide if you should use, continue to use that cable or not. So we've got the, uh, USB tester plugged into a Samsung adaptive fast charger brick that is plugged into just a wall outlet. And I'm gonna plug in a Pixel 6 via USB-C cable and you'll see it switches to Quick Charge 2.0 and you'll see the amps and the volts going through there. If I press the button on the back, you can actually see then the amount of watts that are going through it so it's seven and a half watts now is charging the Pixel. If I unplug this and I plug in my iPhone 13 Pro Max with a USB cable, it's a little different. It's not quite as high as the Pixel because uh, it's a USB, not a USB-C cable that I'm using to charge my Lightning-based iPhone. But you can still see it's quick charging 2.0. It's drawing just about an amp. And if I press the button again, it comes back here and you can see I'm getting just about five watts charging that. If I had a USB-C cable in this line, it would be much higher on my iPhone, but I don't. So again, that's a really good way to see if you're getting what you're expecting from your device and the cable at the same time. So interestingly, it detected this charging block as a Samsung mode. I'm gonna take a a very old Samsung phone and I'm gonna plug it in via micro USB and you'll see, because it doesn't have quick charge capabilities. So you can see that it's, it's only uh, capable of doing 1.5 amps and that's expected with an older device that is using a micro USB connection and not a quick charge cable, uh, a USB uh, C cable or something newer and if you're going to look for any kind of problems and you're not seeing what you expect your device to be able to charge at, then it's probably the cable that you're using or it may be the charging brick, but chances are uh, as long as you're using a modern brick, it'll take as much power as your cable can support and that cable will then dictate to your device what it should actually be bringing in. If it's not a certified proper cable, like if you bought it at a gas station, you may not get quite the results you're expecting. Now we're going to plug in the USB-C cable with a display on it and you'll see the wattage right there. It's getting power delivery and it's going to climb and kind of jump all around as it's charging the battery up. This is a 100 watt cable plugged into a 100 watt GAN charger. So uh, I've seen this jump up as high as about 50, maybe 60 watts. Charge cable that came with my MacBook actually was a 61 watt, so that's probably the maximum it would do. But most I've ever seen is around 50. And that's all it does. It doesn't have another display or anything like that. It just has whatever's coming in and going out. And you will notice it fluctuates quite a bit. And when it's done charging, it'll actually drop down to zero. Pretty handy in a cable that's about $15 Canadian on Amazon. 
The last thing I want to show you to do with USB charging is something called a data blocker. This is a simple little device. It looks like a thumb drive. And basically, like the voltmeter, you plug your cable into this, then you plug this into whatever you're getting your power from. The difference between this and your cable by itself is there's actually no data pin connectivity at all here. This is strictly for power only. So if you're, say, plugging into the seat back on a flight, the plane's computer systems, in theory, or a hacker, could intercept and have access to your device that way. This way, with this in, in the loop, basically there's no way because you're only getting power from this. There's no data connectivity whatsoever. And so you're gonna be safe and protected. Fairly inexpensive, less than 20 bucks online, and you can buy them in uh, bulk if you want. Give them out to your friends, they will love you for it. It's also called a USB condom for very obvious reasons, I hope. Uh, but you know, that's something that I have in, uh, in my travel bag all the time. So if you enjoyed this video, please make sure you like and subscribe. Leave a comment down below if you have any questions or comments about this video or any other videos you'd like us to do as well. We'll see you next time.